You know, the power within, what is it? You know, I've had sports psychologists who've come in and out of our program try to tell us what the power within is. I've had coaches come into the dressing room and give motivational speeches trying to tell us what the power within is. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what it is. I just know that every single girl that ever played in the National Women's Hockey Program had it. Every single one. And I don't think they were necessarily born with it. Because I think everyone has it in, inside of them, but it's different. It's different for everyone. It's different how you get it out of your system, how you achieve great things. Is achieving an Olympic gold medal, medal more important than achieving something successful at work every day? I don't think so. I think it's just, it's in the newspaper. But really, that's the only difference. There are seven reasons why I think our program was so successful. And the reason why so many players in our dressing room had the power within. And the first thing is that we had the ability to learn from challenges. Every single day, life throws us challenges. Some are small, some are big. I do a lot of work with the Ronald McDonald House here in southern Alberta, here in Calgary. And to watch some of those kids come through that house, some of them suffering with cancer, some of them who've been in car accidents, those are real life challenges. Those are challenges that many of us maybe have faced. The things I'm talking to you about are those challenges that we face at work every day, those challenges that my teammates faced in the dressing room, but they're real. They make you feel the same way regardless of the type of challenge. You know, in 1998, we went to the first ever Olympics for women's hockey. And as a Canadian hockey player and a Canadian hockey team, we were by far the favorites going in. And we lost. We brought home a silver medal. Now, as a Canadian hockey player, anything but gold is unacceptable. That's what you train for. That's what you put the jersey on for. That's what it's about. So we didn't even want to come home from Nagano, Japan, because we felt like we'd let down our entire country. We were embarrassed, and we were just extremely disappointed. But I can tell you that 1998 experience, for the 11 or 12 of us who went on to Salt Lake City in 2002, that experience was necessary, because it taught us that we needed to be not only better hockey players, but better people. Learning from challenges. Sometimes we wonder why they're there, why they show up in our regular lives, in our daily lives. But it's because you need to learn something. And sometimes we need those challenges just to sort of point us in that right direction. I remember the day after that loss, I ran into a great Canadian speed skater, Susan Ock. I was heading down to the Olympic cafeteria, and I was in charge of getting breakfast for all my teammates. And she came up to me and she said, Cass, congratulations on the silver medal last night. And I said, well, you know, Susan, it's not like a speed skater where you guys get a time and you win a medal and everyone's excited. I said, we expect gold and we're extremely disappointed. And Susan said something to me that I'll never forget. She said, do you know how many people in this world don't get a chance to be Olympic athletes? And how many Olympic athletes don't get a chance to be medalists? And it was that moment where the light switch went on that what we had accomplished was the first ever silver medal in women's hockey. Were we happy with it totally? No. But here was a situation that we could learn from. That silver medal, I can guarantee you, was a big reason why we won gold in Salt Lake City in 2002. And speaking of that gold, that was the worst hockey year of my entire career. We lost eight times in a row to the United States of America. We only played them nine times. <laughs> you can imagine the frustration in the dressing room game after game after losing to our main rivals. The media prior to going to that Olympic Games was saying we were too slow. Canada was not good enough to beat the United States. In the semifinal game, we were down 3-2 going into the third period. The first time it had ever happened in international hockey where a Canadian team is down, a woman's Canadian team is down to an international opponent in the semifinal. We came back in the third period and beat them seven to three. In the gold medal game, in the gold medal game, for those of you who remember watching it way back in 2002, 
the wonderful officiating we had. <laughs> Sixteen penalties called total, eight in a row to their seven. But I can tell you something. The clock could have fallen down in the middle of center ice and we were going to win that game. Because we had learned from all those challenges that we'd faced all throughout the season. We became stronger. We became united as a group. We played the entire game almost shorthanded, five on four. And there was five key players sitting on the bench who were only power play players, didn't see a lot of ice time. But yet they were standing, moving down the bench, letting the penalty killers go out, doing their job. Because those challenges had prepared them for what we needed to do as a team to bring home that Olympic gold medal.